Hello everyone. I have covered Fair Winter's Hell for one too many times I like to admit, but you guys really should give this exotic a try. Although it requires players to use their MIDI a lot, and also requires them to chuck themselves in head first, its range and effectiveness can destroy a group in one simple hit, as a debuff applied can be overwhelming when combined with arc. Now, what I'm going to show off today isn't new, as this was a major build to use in PvP quite a while back, and we've already covered it for both Solo and Void. This time, however, we'll be using Arc 3.0 with Lightning Surge and Jolt Effect for maximum carnage, while also getting damage reduction, fast ability regen, mini damage increasement, and one of the best Arc Ad Clearer builds available in game. You're going to find that Arc and Fair Winter is truly a match made in heaven. So to start, you're going to want to have Lightning Surge so that while sliding and activating your melee, you'll blink forward and call down a Lightning Strike that jolt targets. Then you'll want Electric Sight in mind where defeating targets with arc abilities or defeating jolted or blinded targets will create iron traces. To put this build down simply, you will be using Lightning Surge the moment you have full charge available and from there you'll apply a debuff to those who are not affected by it and thus create an easy cleanup for both you and your allies. Utilizing both Lightning Surge and Electric Sight Mind is going to make applying everything so much more easier and smoother sailing when using Fell Winters. Now as long as you time your slides when using a combo, the combo will be devastating for anyone and anywhere you go with it. Fragments used will consist of common items that we are familiar with, but also stuff that will enhance the setup even further. The Spark of Resistance provides users with a 40% damage reduction while surrounded. Spark of Beacons allows our arc weapons to blind targets while amplified. Spark of Ions allows us to get more ion traces when defeating dual targets. And Spark of Shock allows our grenades to jolt. Out of all these fragments, you're going to want to have Spark of Resistance and Ion the most as these will be triggering constantly while you're using your melee. You can of course add on the Spark of Frequency so you can reload your weapons faster when using your grenade launcher, for example, or the Spark of Feedback for applying increased melee damage if melee'd. Now, if you do use Feedback, then you can stack it along with Wall of Irons as well, just for more damage. However, only do this if you intend to have a high damage reduction available so you can just survive a tad longer. For the mods and stats section, Resilience, Discipline and Strength are going to be the main stats to invest in, with Strength being the main priority stat. A base minimum of 70 to 100 is the area you will want to aim for, as these stats alongside the mods being used will allow the build to function as one and reward you for your skills. The strength of the build lies within, of course, your strength stat, so if you can get a tier 8 to 10, then this will save you from needing mods that may not be available for all. What I mean by this is that mods such as Heavy Handed isn't available for everyone to access, plus it has a very high slot cost for its effects. Instead of using that one mod, we can instead increase our stat to 90, and then have mods such as Midi Wildmaker and Bountiful Well available so that we can produce two wells instead of one. If you have the Radiant Light mod as well, then of course you can add that on to get that plus 20 in strength for a short cost. However, this isn't fully required. Combining the worlds with Iron Traces and a high stat in general will allow us to get our mini back passively fast and at a cheap cost. This will be the same for Discipline as well, as this will greatly benefit from the worlds and traces created from our attacks, so a simple high stat will be enough to passively regen both stats. Your resilient stat can be aimed as high as you like from the threshold we placed earlier. Remember, we do have Spark of Resistance active that will be giving you quite a high damage reduction from simply being surrounded. While you are here, I would then also recommend you add on the Monochromatic Maestro mod as this will be giving you a 10% damage buff for both weapons and abilities once active. 10% is just 10% and considering how often we can activate it, it holds quite some good value to it so I highly recommend you add that on as well. Left over, I would recommend you then add on the Kinetic or Harmonic Siphons mod so that you can reduce orbs of power easily, hands on for getting super energy via melee kills, and a scavenger mod for whatever heavy is being used. Now lastly, the weapons being used should accommodate the playstyle of the build as best as possible. I recommend you have a wave frame grenade launcher for your secondary. 
ideally something arc such as Dead Messenger or Forbearance. Now I went with Forbearance as I have crafted version with Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction, which is the go-to role for the weapon as a whole. I have found that using our slide melee with the weapon allows us to 100% clear our area in one go if everything lands properly. Now with how to build the setup, you don't need to use the seasonal debuff mod to make full use of the grenade launcher this time, which means it frees up your slot for anything else instead. On top of that, the spark of beacons fragments once activated will allow the weapon to blind those upon getting a kill, so not only does the weapon work really well with the subclass and exotic being used, but it also allows us to shut down near everything as long as we are amplified. This can be replicated with the dead messenger if you want to cover more ground, or even just any arc when you launch in general. But if you have the four bounds available, then pairing it with the current build is probably the best option available. Reinforcing this, we can then add on the hot head with tracking the explosive light to make the setup even more lethal against bosses or two mini bosses alike, since creating orbs of power will be pretty easy. Of course, Thunderlord is another great weapon to use if your slot is free of exotic, and you really want to make full use of the build in general. So as always, Felwinter Helm has one of the most strongest and potent effects when it comes down to applying its special effects far and wide. I've covered a solo and void version of the build before, just to show you how far in depth you can take the exotic through simply adapting it to change. And now with the three light subclasses, I generally have to say Arc offers the best strength to show off the build fully. Having the ability to spread your arc melee damage on a wide scale is already pretty strong in most content, but applying a debuff and blinding effect on top of what we currently have makes it even better for how simple it is. As the build only requires the user to have a full charge melee to make it work, it allows players both new and old to easily pick up and go to town with it, no matter what mods or weapons being used. In this fullness, you can use the build up to master content and still see a high success with it even though the difficulty is now increased. The issue starts to appear once you hit GMs or anything match game wise as that's when you need to slow down or outright not attempt such a maneuver. This is the red line of the build that all players should abide by even though its strength on such content would be warranted. Overall, its appeal is only for those that enjoy using the melee and want to see just how far Fairwinter's Helm build can really go. It can destroy Groots with its AoE, and anything that manages to survive it won't have long to live afterwards. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while here. I will of course leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds that you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.